You guys, I was praying this morning and I was like, oh my goodness, it is five days until Christmas. That is crazy. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Have you done your Christmas shopping? No. You guys yeah, already same. know how I feel about Christmas shopping. I can't get That's into true. it again. That's true. I can't get into it again. I'm in this weird place where I now I'm really excited to Christmas shop. But okay. It's way what? too late to order anything online. How and do I get excited? That's the like only you. way I'm gonna shop. Why are you excited? I think just this is the first year in a long time I've gotten like into the Christmas spirit. So I've okay. been like listening to Christmas music. What? My house is decorated, not because of me, because of my roommates. Yeah. So it's just I've been thinking about Christmas that's and really easing my way into it. Yeah. I love that. Oh. Sorry. We're did back. You, did you turn it on? I think so. Is it on? I'll check. Okay. I'll check. You guys, do you have any New Year's resolutions? How, Let us you, know. Are you doing like a word of the year, saint of the year? You Are you doing any of that? Usually how my saint of the year works is the Lord will give me a saint and I'll be like, that's not it. And yeah. then it usually ends up being it. Like a couple years ago, I was asking him for a saint and he gave me St. Peter. Okay. And I was like, do you mean Pierre Giorgio Frassati? Because <laughs> that's like way more me. Right, but right. it ended up being St. Peter and it was amazing. And we had a great friendship. So this year that's when I was sweet. praying about it, I felt like he was telling me St. Jerome which okay. is like very, I remember you mentioning me. that and you were talking about how you're reading scripture and Advent yeah. kind of goes with St. Jerome. Yeah. So it makes sense, yeah. but I'm still not entirely convinced. Guys, who is your, what are you doing? Do you love to do New Year's resolutions? Do you love to do a word of the year? Saint of the year. What are other things of the year? Isn't there another thing? Uh, That's always talking about it. Word of the Isn't year, saint of thing? the year, verse of the year? Verse of the year? Maybe. I don't have a verse yet. I would like a verse. That's, I think, top priority for me. Verse of the year for Kels? Do you do resolutions, Kels? Well, as I was thinking about it, getting ready for this video, I do have one success story with res resolutions. Stop. When I was Tell in us. eighth grade, okay. I was like, I'm going to give up pop or soda. Not yeah. from the Midwest. Yeah. We don't and that here. <laughs> I did it. And I did it for the whole year. And I what? should have never gone back. But I was determined and told all of my friends, which held me accountable. Wow. And I think that was the big thing is I told everybody I was doing it. So then I like had to do it. I tell people my resolutions every year and I have feel no responsibility to sticking with it. But it's usually because it's like, I'm going to work out every day to totally. be healthy. Yeah. It's like, that's too much to ask for me. Yeah. Can't be healthy Way and be working out. Yeah. I need to at least have ice cream and be working out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I've done that too, where I've been like, I'm going to all of a sudden be this superhuman, everything that I want to be type of yeah. person, work out every day. Don't eat out, right. don't buy coffee ever. Yeah. And it just doesn't work because it's way too much. So I was praying about this year because yeah. I've just been feeling like, you know, I got to get, I got to change something here. I need to. Yeah, into you like, like a, the jump start. Yeah. 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 I, I like the excitement of a new year and I kind of want to capitalize on that. Yeah. So I was just praying about what to do. And, you know, the Lord's been really putting on my heart the need for more silence. I think mm. that's probably a universal need. Yes. Um, and another thing that I love is just going for walks all the time. Which she does I love really walking. can confirm. <laughs> I really enjoy mm -hmm. and would just like to get to a better routine of doing. So I decided instead of saying, I'm going to walk every day, I'm going to go on my walks when I can. And when okay. I do, I'm going to be silent for at least the first 10 minutes. Wow. That's so it's more of like a, um, something I already am kind of doing. Okay. And I'm not saying like, I'm going to do it every day. And then three yeah. days in, I haven't done it right. two days. So then I quit. Right. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. So you guys, Kelsey lived with me when she lived here over the summer and was interning for another ministry here in best. Phoenix. And it gets to be like 117, <laughs> 120 here in Arizona. And every day Kelsey would come home from work. In the afternoon. Go change. Going on a walk guys. I'm like, yeah. Kelsey, it's like 117 out. In retrospect, How that are probably you not gonna wasn't pass a out. good idea. 
<laughs> Halfway through the summer, though, Jenna got a treadmill. And I think that was kind of because of me. It was just for tell. Mike and I were worried about my safety. <laughs> Mike always jokes Not your that he safety, was... like, in our neighborhood. Just, yeah. like, safety well, just like dying. Yeah, right. Mike yeah. always joked that he was going to, like, follow me in the truck and throw me bottles of water. Like a cross-country coach. Throw them at you? Do yeah. they do that? I think so. I don't know. I've never run cross-country. Cross-country people tell us I've what never your coaches really do. <laughs> Okay. Also, speaking of walking really fast, I went on a walk yesterday morning and I was like, I put on my shoes first thing in the morning. I was like, guys, I'm going to put on my tennis shoes so that, you know, like I'm going to yeah. go on a walk. I'm not going to yeah. put on other shoes or like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm going to get dressed for the situation that I'd like to do. Love it. So then I'm like chatting, whatever. I'm like, you guys, I got to get out the door. Got to go. So I go out, it's freezing. It's like 40 it's degrees. So cold. It's like, I'm a total baby because I like 120 degree weather. Yeah. And it's like so cold. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to walk when it's this cold? And I see my breath and I want to, you know, go back inside. Anyway, so I was like, I guess I have to run. This is like the Lord's oh, way wow. and my body's way of telling me I have to run to like warm up my body. Yeah. Is that cool? That is So then I just sweet. jogged. And, like, when I got tired, I walked more. But, like, my body was warmed up by me running. And it was actually, like, a really cool – I think, ultimately, as I'm thinking about resolutions and word of the year, saint of the year, I'm, like, it all is just the Lord. It's, like, these Mm. little whisperings that he's saying to us of, like, try this new thing, which he does all the year round. But I do love that there's something, like, new and exciting that can come with the new year and feeling like there's a new invitation from the Lord to do something. Um, and so I just love that. I love when things are linked with him yeah. and not done apart from him, because really anything we do apart from him is going to fail or is mm-hmm. going to feel like a lot of striving or is going to feel like I'm never going to be good enough. But if we're doing it with him, even yeah. those little days of like, yeah. okay, well I did twice this week, you yeah. know, like I was with the Lord in that, in that silence. Yeah. I think that's yeah. really beautiful. And I think that's kind of like what, you know, has stirred up this desire in me to, you know, spend this time in silence and reflection is just like giving the Lord the space to yeah. do something new. So like, I'm sure next year is going to hold so many like incredible, amazing providential things um, just that I have no idea about. And right. I want to be able to like hear from the Lord in the smaller moments in my everyday and kind of give him the space to speak in that um and also go for more walks yes so more walks the better okay I love that that inspired you to run because I feel like when I go outside and it's really cold I'm just like oh I guess this means I need to walk to the coffee shop and get like a warm drink get a hot coffee no I think of running next time it was so nice that's amazing yeah I loved it and I was listening to a podcast because I don't feel called to do the silence thing Mm -hmm. um and it was excellent. I'm going to have to send it to you. It was all yes, about please. the Sabbath. And it oh was gosh. unreal. This pastor, was it your gathering place? No. This pastor, we've had him on the podcast before, actually, Michael Miller. Oh, he so does this talk on Sabbath rest. And it was so good. At the end, basically, he says, like, all of the sin that we fall into, mm. pornography, um, gossip, I don't know, any of the sins, anger, drinking a lot excessively, blah, blah, blah. Those are all actually symptoms of the fact that we're not entering into a Sabbath rest, which is a commandment from the Lord. We are not taking time to rest and to let God work in our hearts interiorly, Mm. let God work in the world. He said this so such beautiful thing, like for six days we work and God rests. And then on that seventh day is when we're supposed to rest. And that's when God works. Which I thought was so cool. Like if we rest, we allow God to do what he's going to do in our lives and in in our circumstances, as opposed to like always striving and trying to make things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So it was so good. He was like, had this beautiful word at the end of the sermon, which I'll share in the show notes about like, if you are struggling with sexuality Mm. or like, if there's any disorder at all. Um, I really invite you and want to convict you to enter into a Sabbath rest and to like rest with the Lord. He's like, actually, um, when you enter into that sin, um, you know, let's say pornography, that's when is that typically happening? That's typically happening at night when you're supposed to be sleeping. Yeah. 
Isn't wow, that that's so good? Crazy. I know. Yeah. I loved it so much. Anyway, I'll I'll put it in the show notes because yeah. it was excellent and just so convicting to me. And I'm really excited about it. Yeah, man, that is so good. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I this was especially present to me in college, but there are so many times where I noticed like I would like have this thought or desire to do something like later at night and not like even bad things, but just like talking to people or whatever. And then I'd wake up in the morning and be like, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't send that text message. Or I'm so glad. Cause like when you're not resting, it's Mm -hmm. so hard to like think clearly, see clearly. Um, and I remember when you were saying that something this pastor said maybe like last year that I has really stuck with me. Um, over the last year or so, just that like reframing Sabbath Mm -hmm. instead of it being like a, Oh, okay. I've worked so hard. Now I need to like rest to recoup, to work hard again. Um, it's more of like an act of trust. Like Mm -hmm. I'm going to give the Lord my time that I could be using to be more productive, um, that I could be using to like get more done, uh, and just surrender that to him as an act of trust of like, okay, you can do like way more with my time mm-hmm. than I could ever do with like for myself. So like laying that down and giving him that time to rest and just surrendering it to him is like ultimately significantly more productive. And yes. that's really just helped me see like, it's not just about me. Like this is something the Lord has asked me to do. And this is something that he wants for me. And so like as an act of trust, as an act of love to him, I'm going to be obedient. And yes. knowing that he'll bless that obedience abundantly. Like it's for my good. It's not like I'm like giving someone a gift and sacrificing something for myself. The Lord is just so good to invite yes. us into something that's so good for us. Yes. Yeah. So. The last thing I'll say from what he shared was, and then I want to read what you guys shared. So please share below what you're doing. But he said, there's consequences to everything we choose to do that's against the Ten Commandments, for example. Mm. Um, there's consequences if we murder someone. There's consequences if we sleep with someone's spouse. Yeah. And there's consequences if we don't honor and keep holy the Sabbath. So wow. there's consequences to our lives if we are disobedient to what God has asked of us. Yeah. Um, and I can just feel that in my own soul. Like there are consequences to my spirit to my life and circumstances when I don't allow the Lord um, in Mm. (laughs) because I just keep on pushing. Yeah. There is so much goodness that comes from obedience, from rest, from letting the Lord work, even though everything in my body is saying, don't do that. Like you have to keep going because this stuff is not going to get done if you don't do it. Yeah. But if I press against that with God's grace, um, the consequence of that is good fruit in my life. Yeah, totally. I was just about to say, there's like consequence for sin, but also yes. so much reward for prayer and faithfulness. Yeah. Our pastor recently told me, and he said this, but I know he's quoting a saying. I don't know who the saying is. Okay. Uh, but he said, prayer is the currency for grace. Mm-hmm. So if you want to receive blessing, favor, wow. grace in your life, um, even the grace to just like keep going, if you feel like you're in a rough spot, like, Prayer is what we have to do. Um, that's yeah. where grace comes from. So just like there's consequence for sin, there's like <laughs> tenfold reward for faithfulness. Yes. That's so good. Just so beautiful. Okay. Bree said she's doing word of the year, but for 2023, Ooh. instead of one word, it's two. And that's divine mercy. Love that. Kelsey loves love, divine mercy. Love, love, divine mercy. Yeah. Kaylee said, I do word and saint. Then usually the Lord gives me a worship song or verse that relates and speaks to me. What? Kaylee, do you know yours yet? Can you share it below? Yeah. I want to know what your song from this past year was. Oh, that's a good idea. Victoria, my godfather for 2023 is Archbishop Fulton Sheen. That's the sweetest. And my godmother is a blessed mother. Wow. My theme and virtue for the new year is modesty and pure heart. Wow. Victoria, have you read The World's First Love? By Fulton Sheen. It seems a like a book match made in on heaven. The Blessed Mother yes. changed my life. Absolutely amazing. You should definitely read it this year if you haven't already. Or go back to it. I love that. I was thinking for next QA, we might do like top five books you have to yeah. read. Like our top five favorite books. But I'm yeah. curious if you could share yeah. like top, top three. Top three. Okay. Yeah. Um, The World's First Love yeah. by Fulton Sheen. And it's all about Mary. 
right? Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's about Mary. Yeah. Uh, Searching for and Maintaining Peace okay. by Father Jacques Philippe. And that's super easy to read. Okay. Um, and I, this isn't like you have to read, okay. but a book that had a big impact on me was A Witness to Hope by George Weigel. So if you have like three years that you could set aside <laughs> to read this massive book, I don't. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I would. I would part. recommend it. I need the but Cliff Notes version of that. You it's actually, like as big as my head, Jenna. You actually have the audiobook because I <laughs> went to buy the audiobook one time and accidentally <laughs> on bought it on Audible? Jenna's account. Yeah. So <laughs> Jenna can listen to it and report back. <laughs> this is sponsored by Audible. Yeah. It's not. Not actually. Not. Um, also, speaking of Audible, tell them the good news about what's on you Audible. Guys, tell us. You may have heard years in the making. Years in years. the making. We have a little devotional on the virtues for kids called Rise Up. Yeah. And I, how did this even come about? I think we were making audiobooks for Lent and Advent. And then I was like, man, I remember when I used to nanny in the summers, all we would do is listen to audiobooks. We totally. Do this kid's book as an audiobook yes. that you can listen to any time of the year, not just during Lent or Advent. So. Mm -hmm. Nell O'Leary is incredible and mm -hmm. narrated the whole thing and we put it up and it is officially available on Amazon. That's so cool. Yeah. Rise up. What is it? Shining with virtue. Yes. On audible audio book. So you can just put it on the car. You can put it on in your kitchen, <laughs> wherever you listen to audio books. That's so um, cool. Yeah. I just think it's like, it's yeah, it's just link. so accessible. And like the content is so good. I really, yeah. really love that book. I have learned a lot from it as an adult. It's so excellent. Yeah. Um, okay. Sarah said, I'm working on resting and praying for more trust. Uh oh. Praying the rosary daily is my new year mm. goal. Can you guys still see us? I don't want to reload my page. Okay. Kaylee said this year song was Defender by Upper Room. Wow. Love that song. Love that song. Word was Immerse, Exqueeze Me. That's amazing. I remember one time Sarah Erickson told me, when I hear Defender, the song, yeah. I just want to start doing backflips. And I feel what? the same way. That's sweet. Yeah. She's like, the Lord is going to war for me. Yeah. So I think of that every time I hear that song. I'm like, the Lord is going to war for me. Wow. And then I want to start doing backflips. Wow. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. I love Defender. Saint, your saint of the year was St. James the Greater. Ooh. That's cool. Okay, MZ, I love the thought of starting something with the new year, but I have trouble keeping the habits throughout it. Any ideas? Kels? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, you're asking a novice, <laughs> but I think... <laughs> The best, Two of them. yeah. The best advice I've received in terms of like keeping habits is to stack habits. Mm -hmm. So uh, different times when I've like resolved to pray the rosary daily on my own, I'm like, okay, I have to do this while I'm like driving to work. Otherwise, the day is going to get away from me, and I won't end up doing it, and then I'll get discouraged. But I'm already driving. I have this commute. I'm in the car instead of listening to the radio or my favorite playlist. I'll just pray the rosary. Um, I've heard other people saying, like, if there's a prayer they want to pray every day, they'll do it while they're brushing their teeth or making their bed or something. But, like, put it on top of something you're already doing um, just to make sure it's not like, okay, I have to carve out 30 minutes of my day specifically for this task. I think yeah. it helps to, you know, buddy it up with something else. Mm -hmm. Totally. And ultimately, I think whatever you are feeling called to do, I think you could ask the Lord, give me the grace to totally. do it. Yeah. Like, give me the ability, give me the time to do it. Um, and I'll cooperate with your grace. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious what habits are kind of coming up that the, that you think maybe are from the Lord that he's asking you to do in the new year. Um, but yeah, stacking habits is huge. Um looking at your day, being realistic mm -hmm. about your day and your life. Um, talking to friends, I think is huge for accountability. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to, I'm not calling this a new habit. I'm not calling this a resolution, but just last night I, for the first time was like, I'm going to read a book before bed hmm. instead of watch YouTube. Cause I love YouTube so much. And I did it. 
And I was like, I should put in the app that I'm going to do this. So then I'll yeah. actually start doing yeah. it. Cause it'll like, if I tell other people I'm going to do it, then I have to stick to it. Right. I want to be, have integrity and be true to my word. Yeah. Um, so I was like, maybe I should put it in the app. And then I was like, no, I'm not ready for that level of commitment. Totally. Totally. I felt the same way. Like I recently moved into a new house yeah. and for the longest time have like been plagued by this shame of like, I can't make my bed in the morning. It's like such a small task, but I just have like, I've tried to do it as a habit and it's like, yeah, just really hard. And so I was like, I should just like ask my roommates to hold me accountable for this. And so like always closing my door or like just trying to hide shame. the mess of my yeah, life. Right. Uh, but I am also to the point where I'm really asking the Lord for the grace yes. to do it. Uh, and then once I get a good streak going, maybe throw in that accountability, which is probably wrong. And saying this, I should just ask my roommates tonight. If they <laughs> they might me. be listening. Yeah, maybe. Hey, Sarah and Jenny. But yeah. So I'm with you. I think like what I said about habit stacking is good, but ultimately like nothing's going to work without the Lord. Yeah. And so like asking him for the grace, like, Lord, I am so weak. I'm so like quick to, you know, give up my resolutions, please just like give me some of your strength to yes. do this like small thing. And let me do it with um, like a heart for you. Let this be an offering for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's huge. I love that. Um, okay. Kaylee said, I'm still praying about 2023, but I keep getting the word fulfillment. Ooh, that is amazing. I love that. Hi, Bonnie. Um, I've never done a word or saint of the year. Annalise said, I will definitely focus my prayers on it. Hmm. Yeah. It's exciting to think of what saint the Lord might be inviting you to like walk with or pr ask their intercession for. Um, just the other day, my daughter was asking my husband, Mike and me, Hey, who's the patron saint of business owners? <laughs> so we looked up, like she just was curious and it's Saint Homobinus. We think oh my that's gosh. how you say it. Yeah. Have you heard of him? No. He's amazing. He would like, Mike read all about him. He's so cool. So now we're going to start saying again? Homobinus. Okay. I'll look him up because I don't want to be saying it wrong. Mike was originally saying homo bonus, but we think nice. it's Homobinus. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, he was amazing. So I just think it's cool when things come up and you can kind of listen to the prompting, read about them, be yeah. like, yeah, I kind of connect with this person. You know? That's amazing. Yeah. That reminds me just that name, Habamamus. Hamabanus. Hamabanus. Yeah. <laughs> reminds me of when Pope Francis was elected. When okay. I was in high school, I was like so excited. I brought my iPod touch to school and like hooked it up to the Wi-Fi so I could get updates. No. And then oh finally he was elected. And I was just kind of like getting into my faith at this point. And so I'm like on Twitter, people are saying like, white smoke, white smoke. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a new Pope. And then people started tweeting like, Hebe Moose Popham. Like oh, we have a Pope. Right, right, That's right. like a thing people say. Yeah. And I thought that was the Pope's name. <laughs> So then I texted everybody in my family, like, we have a new Pope. His name is Famous. <laughs> and then Kelsey, I figured out that stop. wasn't true. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what made me think of that. I'm like, maybe it wasn't too far. There is a saint that's kind of similar. <laughs> that's amazing. Anyways, just had to share. That was. <laughs> Never mind, guys. Yeah. His name's Francis. Never mind, it's Francis. <laughs> Whew. I was Way like, maybe, easier to say. maybe this is like his name and then hopefully he'll change it to right. something like John. <laughs> but luckily it was nobody's name. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, MZ said, I still need to draw my saint of the year. Okay. What? I need to see your drawings. Did you do Faustina in your avatar? That's amazing. Never done a word, verse or song, but maybe I'll start. I love that. Yeah. No time like the present. I also love like that it's something the Lord can inspire and it's something that you don't have to do. That's true. So I don't do it. I think ever. it really just starts with like, Lord, what do you desire for this next year? Yes. And for me, it was like praying more with scripture. Mm. And then, so because I like love the saints and I'm yeah. always like, I wonder if there's some, someone here for me. And he like asked me or inspired St. Jerome. I'm like, okay, well that makes sense. Uh, Cause it like lines up with what we're doing, but I'm also like, I'm just going to do this like one thing that the Lord is asking and kind of see what happens. Yeah. Not. 
Yeah, not feel the pressure to yeah. do all the things. Yeah. 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 Not ordering any St. Jerome merch quite yet. <laughs> um, Marnie said, I want to thank you guys for everything you do. I'm so thankful. The last series on the heart was so good. Mm. I'm very thankful for your ministry. Thank you. Marnie, you're so Thanks welcome. Being here. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah, I saw someone at mass the other day and they were like, I just love this heart series. What? I wanted to tell Beth. I know I loved it oh. so much. So if Beth you guys haven't Davis. gotten a chance to watch it, please do and join us in prayer. Um, and I think at the end of this one, she invited all of us to go to adoration too, which I'm excited to do. And I yeah, hope me that too. we all can do that. Be with each other in the Eucharist. Um, okay. Let me see. You have new year's resolutions. Tell me everything. Um, Lexi said, my word for 2023 is known wow. to be known by him and to know him more. My saint of the year is mother Teresa because she is everywhere. Totally after me right now. Lexi, I love that. Lexi, you got to talk to Beth about that. She is all about Mother Teresa. Totally. Um, Ellen, Elian, I never know. Tell me how to say it. My sister had Mother Teresa as her saint this year, and she ended up volunteering in Armenia with the Sisters wow. of Charity. God is full of surprises. Wow, wow, that wow. is rad. Talk about surrender and obedience yeah. to the call. That yeah, seriously. is incredible. Can I say something about Mother yes, Teresa? Please. Beth and I have been talking a lot about Mother Teresa. Okay. And I've always felt this like, like, oh my gosh, if I knew Mother Teresa, she would not like me because she's like so intense and holy right. and the MCs are like crazy. Yeah, like yeah. you can't even fathom like the life that they live. They're so holy. And Beth was sharing with me how she, you know, was talking to our pastor and just like want, desiring like this level of holiness, like Mother Teresa's level of holiness seems like unattainable. And he told her like, you know, you're giving Mother Teresa a lot of credit. Like this wasn't all Mother Teresa. It was a lot of grace. Mm -hmm. And I've just thought about that, like, especially looking into this like new year mm -hmm. and like being tempted to like, and also inspired to like come up with resolutions and make changes. Like it can feel so impossible when we do things on our own, yes. especially when we like look at other people who seem to be like doing things so much better than us. Mm -hmm. Um, but really, it's just like we can do nothing without the Lord. And I know I already said that, but I just like, I feel like I'm relearning it and hearing it again for the first time. Like, mm -hmm. just the Lord is what's going to make our lives great and it's going to sustain us in our efforts and our holiness and like wants to make us fulfilled and mm -hmm. give us a beautiful life. And so, yeah, I just want to encourage you if you maybe are feeling a little bit of that tension. Um, going into this year, like just not feeling like you have much to give or like you can't reach the level that you want. Um, just lean into the Lord and receive his grace. Yeah. 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 I go back often to um, St. Paul who says um, basically like the weaker, this is my interpretation, the weaker I am, the stronger the Lord is. Yes. So once I recognize how weak I am and incapable and have none of the resources within myself to do or to be holy, but to do anything, the more I can rely on God and his power is made perfect yeah. right there. Yeah. Um, and he is made perfect within me, in my weakness, um, in my reliance on him instead of my reliance on myself. Mm. Um, so yeah, I just love yeah. that so much, Kels. I was just reading a book last night um, yeah. talking about the verse from St. Paul. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ yes. Jesus. And they're talking about the difference between like condemnation says that like, this is okay. This is the end of the road. We're done here. Like you're done. Wow. Can't go any further, but that's not of the Lord. The Lord will convict us and like inspire us to change course. But like, it's never a dead end. There's always like, even if you're feeling like, you know, I don't know where to go or I'm stuck or you're convicted to change something. It's because there's something more. It's not because like this is over and I've yes. failed and like I have nowhere to go. Yeah. So that's been just a really big light for me. I love that. No condemnation. It's so cool. Um, okay. Let's see what you guys got going on. Marnie said, I want to do Fiat 90 with my mom and sisters. Hoping to do it. Please pray for us. When are you starting that, Marnie? I really want to start prayer journaling. Also, you guys are such an inspiration. I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you too. I also have something in my heart I need to break up, but we're in... Christmas break. Should I wait till we get back to school or call him now? 
Kels, I'm not good at relationship stuff. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I think... Mm. I'll start. Yeah. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> I Jenna think it's really, it's really amazing to pray and ask God what yeah. he wants. Yeah. Um, and if the first step is just honesty to say like, Hey, I just want to let you know, I'm struggling with this. I'm going to be praying about it, but I just want to like put it in your ear. If you could keep praying about it too. Um, but this is how I'm feeling. I don't know. I haven't yeah. been in a relationship, little baby one in a long time. Yeah. I think um, also, yeah, just practically, like, I'm sure you have, like, been praying about this and come to the uh, decision that you need to break up. And the Lord wants you to be free and live in freedom. And I understand um, your heart probably of, you know, wanting to be there in person. And I don't know how long you guys have been together and wanting to be respectful of this person. And so I think just, like, asking the Lord what he desires. Um, and then also paying attention to like the fruit that's coming from, you know, you thinking about like, Oh, we need to break up. We need to break up. If that's like bringing you anxiety and you're feeling like really tied up about that, maybe it is best to just like have a conversation now, um, instead of waiting mm. two, three weeks before you go back to school. Yeah. But ultimately I think just like go to the Lord and maybe just ask him like, what's the next right thing for me to do? Um, if it's to have a conversation or if it's to, you know, take a break from my phone and really lean into time with my family over Christmas and just kind of let myself come down from all of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. You never know. Yeah. Thanks, Kels. Anyways. Also, I want to invite you guys to our prayer pledge. So every year yes. we do a prayer pledge, which for the 31 days of the start of the new year, we pledge to pray every day together. It's and the best. so we'll be doing that this year. I'll drop the link in the show notes, um, in the description, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's really cool. Even on the app, which there's a link to it in that post, you can even find people and members near you. So you can actually find a prayer partner within the app where you guys can hold each other accountable to the prayer pledge, which is just like, hey, did you read today? Did you get a chance to pray today? Um, read with like the prompt and pray mm -hmm. with it. Um, how is your prayer going? What's the Lord doing? That sort of thing. Because ultimately what Blessed Is She is, is not just, not just us interacting here online, but you actually meeting with other people, talking about the Lord together um, in intimate conversations and ideally to even meet up in real life, which lots of people do. The Lord is crazy and mm -hmm. makes amazing things happen. Um, so I just want to encourage you to that. Again, it'll be in the description to sign up for our prayer pledge. Also, the theme is rad. It's called Awaken Love. It's and amazing. It's excellent. You will want to join us yeah. for this year's prayer pledge. Yeah. yeah. I also think if you have like you don't know what you're going to do for next year. Or I mean, even if you do, this is like such a great place to start yeah. because it's like, okay, I'm just going to make this commitment and I'm going to do it with other people. So there's that accountability. Yeah. Um, and it's just going to come to my email every day mm -hmm. or like be on the app. Um, and I'll be able to like pray with other people. Uh, it's just like a really great kickstart for the year. Yeah. And there are quite a few saints involved. So maybe the Lord will give you some awesome breath. women saints. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. I think Mother Teresa is one of them. I might be wrong. Don't quote me. Mm. I think I'm wrong. All right. We love you guys. Oh, wait. Merry Ireland. Christmas. Let oh. me see what you said. Just got here. But any tips on loving those around me this Christmas when it's difficult to be open about my faith without fear of hate, even some ways to best lean on Jesus through it? Hmm. Kels, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, my initial thought was I feel like kind of in these like tense relationship situations, especially yeah. around the holidays. Um, I've always found that like if I feel weird with somebody um, or I feel like, you know, they're talking about me or they're thinking poorly of me, I will like get defensive without mm. like there being any like direct conflict. Wow. And so that like really steals my peace. And so a practice that I've kind of taken up is just like, sometime in preparation, just like going back to asking the Lord, like, okay, show me how you see me, like wow. how you see me as a daughter, as a cousin, as a friend, as blah, 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 because he's not going to condemn me and mm -hmm. say like bad things about me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when my identity is more like solid going into that, I have like more confidence and it's easy to like brush things off. Um, 
in that way. So maybe that's helpful. That's a good word. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In terms of sharing your faith, I mean, it's just like who you are. Yeah. So, and you're so lovely. Yes. <laughs> like just sharing your heart and yeah. who you are, I think is a witness and people who love you will love that and see that in you. Yeah. I had the image that I've talked about a couple of times, the idea of diffusing peace that like every room that you walk into Ireland or anyone else listening that like you would be peace in that room, you would be bringing yeah. peace. So even when things do get heightened or things feel awkward or there's tension that you would just rest in the peace of Christ being in your heart mm -hmm. um, and be able to radiate that peace to the rest of the room where it's like, okay, there's something, mm -hmm. Ireland's pretty chill right now. And there's yeah. like awkwardness. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so just to be with the Lord in that pain and suffering and sadness even. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, pray for you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone.